I'm just going to wing it. Yeah, yeah. Because I think the conversation we had before was just perfect. Yeah, so. You know your questions, though. Yeah. So, what we want to chat to in this summit is uh, a couple of things. Is where's the future of the health and fitness industry going? Especially with the. Uh, uh, there's 61% of people are obese, and one out of two people suffer from depression. Yet. And there's more information out there yet we're getting fatter and unhappier. So where do you see it going and how do you think you could reduce those, those statistics? Um, well, I, um, I've started saying lately that the health and fitness industry is upside down and inside out. Yeah. And uh, you know, some people don't like hearing me, hear me saying that. You know, like I put a post up on Facebook. But um, no, where do I see it going? Um, I see it continuing to just to just rob people basically for forever. It'll yeah. just keep, it'll never stop. That that will never stop. It will all there's a there's a, there's a mass part of the population that, that are just yeah, they're just unconsciously just into it. It's all media and all that sort of stuff. So there, so there's that. But things can be changed with certain types of people that believe differently. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, you know, so you mentioned the depression stuff like that and you mentioned that so many people are obese this Spar more than that, but let's just address them two things. Yeah. Um, when someone can't meet their human need of, of mastering themselves inside and out, mm. um, then they will fall into depression. Mm. Um, basically, looking at themselves in the mirror and hating on themselves. Um, yeah. That's the biggest problem. Um, there's so many reasons why people get depressed. You know, emotional events, the way that they're brought up, yeah. you know, negativity everywhere, all that sort of stuff. But one of the biggest things why people become sad and fall into this, you know, insecure way of living is that they've not mastered themselves. If we look in society, everyone's joining gyms, everyone's paying for diet after diet after diet, self-image, steroids, tattoos, Botox, you name it. It's all down to self-image. All these magazines, all the TV media, everything is based on a better self-image. It's not wrong, it's perfect. Everyone is supposed to master this area, but the, the fact is, the education, the mentorship, um, all the obstacles that people face um, are, are just too hard to get over. So um, if we look at from the age we went to school to the age we leave school, um, there wasn't much education there to be honest. Um, have we ever been taught how, how we feel, why we feel the way we do, how we think, why we think the way we do? Mm. Um, how to understand that psychology and emotional understanding? No. Mm. People are just an absolute mess. Yeah. Do they understand the human needs? No. But it's it's still running in them. So they're heading, yeah, they're heading to the gym, they're heading to this diet. And when it becomes too hard, or when there's an obstacle in the way, or financial problems, um, for some reason they just can't sustain it. Yeah. And then they fall back into that way of putting back on weight again, etc. So how? What tips do you think you give people? That because you're saying great success. And just to let everyone know that you know, you've been a mentor of mine in, in the past and helped me with my peak performance. So, uh, how do you think we can address these these issues? And what what, what tips do you, can you give people to have that sustainability with their with their health and fitness in an organic way, not in this superficial yeah, you know, yeah. steroid yeah. bulk up tattoos and stuff like that? So, yeah. still want to have that element. But how do you think? What, what are the tips we could give people out there to, to do? To, to do fitness in a healthy, healthy, organic way. All right, cool. Well, um, my tips are um, basically return back to natural. So in society, I've got to be careful what I say here, um, there's a lot of poison. Mm. Um, there's a lot of poison in mentality, negativity, and, and uh, media, and brainwashing, I call it, which is all related to money mm. um, and advertising, all that sort of stuff. So there's, a, there's, a, there's an element of the mental game that we've got to really address. So I've got this system, I do a six week challenge for, for athletes, people in all walks of life, and basically we, we focus on three areas. It's we address the mental area first, subconsciously and consciously, then we look at natural organic eating, heading back to the olden days, and living on you know, just, just natural, the best natural food that we possibly can, and nothing processed, nothing with hormones in, Nothing with pesticides, herbicides, um, you know, like 
nothing that's been injected into our food um, and, and, and and like the Italians yeah. uh, um, putting love into food and, and, and not putting food prep into plastic bags like a chicken that's been full of steroids and hormones yeah. and antibiotics to, to make it to make it live and then it's, it's brought to us and then it's cooked and put in a bag with some vegetables that's got herbicides freaking pesticides all over it and it's been in the ground with no nutrients in the soil exactly. but it looks healthy and it sounds healthy chicken and broccoli mm. in a bag mm. there's no love mm. there's no taste there's no nothing that's going to drive that person crazy yes it'll get results if you eat it but just the fact of the stuff that we're putting in our body is just absolutely crazy so the number two tip is um, we work on um, bringing some love back into cooking mm. and going and finding your local butcher that's organic going to the, you know, the Sunday markets um, the farms markets that's organic and then people, you know, will give you all the excuses in the world. Oh, it's not sustainable buying organic food, it's too expensive. Well, don't eat as much. Mm. Make food go la last longer. Eat two meals a day and snack on stuff. And again, in the in the food industry uh, and the fitness and health, you know, we're told to eat two, three, four meals a day, whatever. Um, protein shakes in between and all these tablets and stuff. It's all false. It's not real. Um, so, yeah, I'm a real big advocate on finding some organic soil, get the food out of there, put love into every single process, um, and you can't go far wrong. Um, what happens when you start eating organically and start putting love into food and, and really loving your cooking, um, and it's all fresh, you made, nothing in a packet, nothing in a tin, nothing from the supermarket, yeah. um, your body starts to regulate. You're going to probably wonder what I mean by regulate. Well, if this person's fat and the hormones are out of whack, and the kidney counts are out, and the blood, you know, all the bloods are wrong, mm. and the cholesterol's high, and the, you know, it starts to regulate. Yeah. You know, high blood pressure starts to regulate. Yeah. When you cut out all the falseness out of all the diet, and you start adding bad natural food, and the best hydration water that you could possibly ever drink, which is boiled, filtered water, nothing out of these plastic containers and not, not from the taps mm. it's literally by the best filtering machine you can you add that to organic way of living yeah. and then listen to the body yeah when is it hungry they say you must eat breakfast in the morning it's the most important meal of the day well if you've had a big meal the night before and your body's telling you you're not hungry in the morning don't eat yeah if you want to eat at 11 o'clock at night because your body is saying I'm hungry then eat mm. then the question is what are you eating yeah are you eating dips with crackers, yeah. old spots, you know, nothing in it, pure fat and sugars and yuck. Or yeah. are you eating, you know, like a little small omelette and scrambled organic eggs with some yeah. mushrooms and some spinach or something like that before you go to bed, or an apple or a, you know, an organic apple or a banana. Following your body when it tells you you're hungry, eat. Eat a small amount of food. Wait, a little, you know, a couple of minutes until your body recognizes that you're full, and that, that's all you need, and then you yeah. move on. You can eat five or six times a day for training, but it's the question, is it organic, is it really healthy, is it unprocessed, at low, in, low in processed carbs and high in nutrition, mm -hmm. um, that's what I'm really interested in. So the, the second area is the organic fresh eating. Yeah. Um, and the third area is one without money, unless you want to spend money, yeah. exercise. Um, I don't train in the gym. I, I don't pay too many membership fees. I definitely don't pay for a personal trainer that's going to blast me into oblivion, yeah. spike all my, um, the adrenal glands my adrenal and glands yeah. and stress hormones. Yeah. And, you know, it causes stress. It does. It causes all yeah. that. Why do we need stress when we're, we're already in a stressful yeah. environment with that job and stuff yeah. like that? So we basically start to mess around with all our hormones. Yeah. Athletes, so I've been an international athlete myself. Yeah. I went to the doctors for a regular checkup, my family doctor, for when I was seven years old. I was 98 kilos, ripped up, muscly as hell, playing for the Sydney Roosters. Mm. Um, when I went back home, had the blood test, he said my kidneys counts are out, my livers are out, my hormones are out, my white blood cells are out, yeah. my blood pressure's high, um, and he says, what the hell is going on? Mm. He says, you look amazing. Yeah. He says, you look like a god. Yeah. You should be a god. You know, yeah. you play for England and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And he goes, but your insides are worse than an old beast, 45 year old, and you're yeah. 20, whatever. He says, bring me everything you've got. Bring me every supplement, every t your diet sheet, everything. And he says, we're going to analyze a lot. So he analyzed a lot, and he told me to go towards organic. 
um, never touch any supplements ever again. It's not real, it's not from the floor, don't touch it. And he was the guy that really spurred me on to study organic, go to you know, seminars with organic, organic farmers. And the actual organic farmers were saying that um, they used to own the normal farmers yeah. and uh, they wouldn't eat their food. Oh, really? They wouldn't eat their food and that's why they, uh, I'm not, yeah, I've got to be careful what I say, but they, they, they quit, they quit everything because they were being controlled. Yeah. And they went and got their own. Yeah. Their own new start, the new fresh bit of land, and started organic, started really small, and then started to go to farmers markets, and then eventually could survive. But it was the ethics of what we were after. Yeah. And these are the people that I listened to about that fresh food and stuff like that. And I, and I love that concept. And we were chatting before about uh, people's mindset. As soon as we talk about organic, they think expensive. Yeah. You know, and and we'll go around a little bit of chat before about this. And so, what what advice can you give to people? Who, Simple advice to, to counteract that that perception of being expensive. What what can you tell people? Um, we'll just do a budget. Mm. Just um, write down what you normally spend at the normal food supermarkets um, a week. Mm. Um, we can eat less though as well. Can't we, we, right. Well, we should be eating less. That's yeah. the thing. It's yeah. okay to be hungry. Exactly right. Um, but you know, when your body says it wants some food, the question is, what are you going to put in there? Yeah. Um, but the first thing to do is write a budget, but label everything that you buy. Look at that receipt. You know, if you spend 150, 200 a week, and you've got kids, whatever, look at your receipt, and I guarantee you, most people watching this, about 80% of that food will be processed, or it will be um, carb loaded, you know, false fat, full of sugar, or hidden sugars, or whatever. It will be in packets and stuff like that. Um, and it, that's where the, the, the truth is right there. It's, it's, it's um, yeah, it, it just stares you straight in the face. But then what you can do after that is just go to the local um, organic butcher. There's going to be one in your area. Mm. It's worth traveling. Buy a bulk if you have to travel. Um, go to the, the, the farmer's markets and just buy less. Mm. But then prepare more. So, you know, back in the old days when there was, you know, there was hard times, you know, these little Italian families, they'd cook all day, the little... They, they do stews. That's my grandmother now. They still. do casseroles. <laughs> they would do, you know, they would do food that last a family. Mm. Loving to food and and start cooking for days on end. So when I cook now, uh, it'll be shepherd's pie, organic. So it'll be organic beef with vegetables in there, with an organic tomato-based sauce, sweet potato on the top. That's it. In the oven, big, big one. Organic salad in a big bowl with whatever. Might even put some parmesan cheese on there, whatever, and, and some vinaigrette. There's the salad. And then the next thing is a tray of veggies. So I'll just chop all the veggies, pumpkin, you name it, all, all on a tray with olive oil over. That's in the oven. And then I'll do a roast chicken as well with garlic and onions all around. Mm -hmm. Organic, in. There's three days of food. Whenever I'm hungry, I just rip off a piece of chicken, stuff it in my mouth with an apple, whatever, I'm out the door. Yeah. That's gonna last me an hour. Yeah. If I'm hungry again, I just nip in. I get a little plate full of shepherd's pie, reheat it in the oven, boom. There's another little meal. Mm. Um, you know, what I like about that way of doing it is that is it, there's an element of freedom in how we're eating. Yeah. And people are so timed, like I have to eat an hour and a half before the gym. No way. Like I might not even be hungry before no the way. gym. Yeah. You know? And then, so that's what, it's a, it's a good way of looking at it. So it's like, a, it's more based freedom. on how you're feeling. It's yeah. with freedom. Exactly. It's how you feel. Um, you know, if you're not hungry, don't eat. But here is it is a bit of a catch-22. If you're not moving, if you're not exercising regularly, and you're that type of person that sat at the desk all day and you're not hungry, now that's a bit of an alarm bell. Um, yes, you don't need calories if you're not burning them off and your metabolism's not kicking in at the best. Yeah. But if someone sat down a lot and don't exercise, then there's other stimulants that can make you not hungry and mask it. So that's one situation. But if you're training and you're moving and your metabolism's going, and you're eating well and you're not hungry, don't eat. Mm. So last night I ate um, two big plates of um, organic Italian meatballs yeah. with uh, roast vegetables in a tomato sauce. Yeah. And my plate was stuffed. During the day I had no breakfast. Um, I snapped on two bananas at one period, um, a handful of chicken, like I was saying, mm. I just grabbed the chicken breast off the cooked chicken that I'd made the organic one and an apple. And I had a couple of coffees, that was it. Yeah. 
So when I got to the night time, my body's going, I'm starving. Mm. So I wanted to go to bed full. Yeah. Now in the fitness industry, in the health industry, this is, this is scrutinised again. Mm. Don't eat before you go to bed. Yeah. I woke up in the morning and I'm a kilo lighter than I was in the day. Oh really? See, yeah. that, that's, that's amazing. You yeah. know, it's something like that. Because that's what I was going to eat lead into. Do you, you know, do you have any tips on do you eat before you go to bed and stuff like that? Yeah, just to hear that. There's, that there's like no that. real. If that, so let's have a look what I ate last night. So um, organic meatballs. Mm. So beef, vegetables. Um, with some love, rolled into balls, yeah. put in the oven, organic tomato sauce with organic vegetables. Yeah. Vegetables, hardly any calories, but dense in nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely amazing for you. Um, the protein in the meatballs, with the sauce and the onions and the garlic, mm -hmm. there's hardly anything there. There's yeah. hardly any carbs, for one. The, the carbs that I'm getting are just amazing carbs and not processed carbs that just fizzle out, there's no nutrients in them. Exactly right. So I'm getting, every, I'm getting good fats, from the organic fat, the saturated fat that's in the, in the, in the mints. Um, and it's, it's, it's amazing, it's everything your body wants. It's hard, I hardly had any sugars yesterday, and the sugars I had were natural from fruit, mm -hmm. so it wasn't false sugar. Yep. The salt I had was Himalayan salt in anything, yep. rock, from rocks. Yep. And everything was organic, full of nutrition, so this morning I woke up at half five feeling absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. I weighed myself and I was a kilo lighter. Mm -hmm. um, I did train yeah, t twice yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, drank about five litres of water, and yeah. that's the secret. I just don't follow any rule apart from when my body says eat, I eat, but I put organic, natural food in yeah. when it says eat. That's so, it. And I love that element of freedom with the food. Do, are you the same with, with your training as well? Is it so specific? Or anything like okay. that? Or is that a sense of freedom? Like, I just feel like training, yeah. so I train. Is that um, how it's... So I talk about loving food. Yep. No different to training. So this lady comes to me and she says, Mark, um, one of my New Year's resolutions this year was to lose weight get the ideal body, mm. the dream. I joined the gym January the 2nd um, after my hangover. Um, yeah. She said, bought a whole heap of gear. Um, got a personal trainer three times a week and we started. Eventually he put me on a, a, a diet plan. Um, I won't mention the company, but it was a company, yeah. Yep. And um, she thought, wow, I'm away. And she started getting a few little results within the first couple of weeks. Um, but she said after a couple of months, um, it was getting really expensive, is an obstacle. Yeah. And she said I was um, really, really stiff and exhausted. And I started to mentally start to break with the nutrition that I was eating. Mm. Um, there was no taste, it was monotonous if that's the word. Um, and everything slowly just started to break down in, in terms of the way I was feeling. Mm. Um, 5.30 in the morning was my class. Um, I was starting to cry before I went in. I wasn't looking forward to it the night before. I was having anxiety about the training. Yeah. I was leaving the training absolutely exhausted. It was painful, it wasn't enjoyable. Yeah. Can you hear all the messages? Yeah. Um, costing massive amounts of money, mm. not enjoying the process. Mm. The brain's going crazy at the food she's eating. Mm. And then she comes to me and says, I'm still losing no way. Yeah. I have to eat four or five meals a day with shakes in between. Yeah. Um, he says, I'm putting on muscle, so that's why my weight's not moving and I'm losing fat. I don't feel any leaner, mm. she said, and um, I'm at wit's end. Yeah. Can you help me? Mm. So, um, yeah, again. So I said, okay, come and sit down with me. So we have a little chat. And I said, right, I want you to pick five exercises that you absolutely love that isn't in a gym and isn't with a personal trainer. Mm. So she had a little think and she goes, I love dancing. I went, when did you last dance? Mm. She goes, years. I went, does dancing burn calories? Does dancing keep you firm? Mm. She went, yes it does. I said, do you think about losing weight when you dance? No. Mm. What are you thinking about? Concentrating on the dance, learning the moves, yeah. enjoying the moment, yeah. And I'm like, cool, there's one, give me another one. Mm. She goes, oh, I love to swim. Mm. And I went, are you a member of a swimming club or have you got a pool? And she's like, no. I said, but you love to swim, right? She said, yeah, I love it. Mm. And I went, right, cool. There's another one. Um, I love to bike ride. Yeah. I said, have you got um, a bike? She goes, no. All right, right, let's get a bike. Mm. And, and then she told me another one, which was, um, she likes to just go for a walk on the beach. And if she sees some hills, she'll just do some little hills. She'll mm. do a walk run. She gets her sweaty. She, she used to like that, but she mm. doesn't do that anymore. Mm. 
So I said, they're easy, right? And she goes, yeah, yeah, they're easy. And I said, and when you do them, when you walk along the beach, you don't really think about losing weight, you just enjoy the environment, it's beautiful, you're in nature. When you're riding a bike, again, the same feeling, it's quite easy, but you're moving, you're strengthening your legs and you're getting your body warm and sweaty. And I said, the dancing's very stimulating, and what was the other one, swimming? I said, swimming's very relaxing, you take your time, it's, you, know, you use the whole body. So I said, right, so cancel your membership, cancel your personal training, start saving all your money. I said, we want to now focus on loving your training. Um, the, the requirement is I want you to train once to twice every day. But here's the goal. If you had to train once or twice a day, you'd be absolutely smashed to oblivion. You don't want to train, do you? And she goes, no. And I said, so regardless of your excuses, I don't care what time you have to get up, we're wanting 35 to 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how you feel, just move. Pick one of them one of them areas. Get a bike. Get out on your bike. Yeah. If you're bored of that, the next day do the walk. If you're bored of that, the next day go and do some hills. And if you if you want to do the bike three days in a row, then do, do the, the bike, bike three days in a row. row. Yeah. Just yeah. move, yeah. right? And I said at night, allow again some more time to do another exercise, something else. If you want to go to the gym, go to the gym. If you want a personal trainer, go to the personal trainer. And um, awesome. I said, but now what we're really focusing on is love behind your training. So I'll give you an example for me. Uh, when I do jiu-jitsu, okay, so I'm a retired football player, I need that, I need that wrestle, I, that need, competition. I need that competition. Yeah. But um, jiu-jitsu is a soft sport. Yeah. It's it's the gentle art of submission and mastering technique and oh, it's just amazing. Yeah. So it's very stimulating. So um, I go to jiu-jitsu, um, we go through moves for the first hour we learn in your mind you're being stimulated you're growing in mm -hmm. self-development so it's yep. very very educational you feel like a machine because you're starting to protect yourself and learn these moves and then for the last half an hour we roll so we, we compete we probably get about three rolls in a session five three or five so minutes it's, a, like it's six, minutes six minutes and you're going for it yeah and you're practicing everything you learn the day so there's a competition you learn it's sweaty you're in a gi mm -hmm. all right when I come home after that, I'm stimulated. There was not one second I thought about weight. There was not one second I thought about getting ripped up. There was not one second I was dreading any moment. Um, it was just all about learning. It was completely um, something that I enjoyed doing. Yeah. When I got home, I stunk. I was sweating. Hot day, mm -hmm. so I've got a lap pool. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, I'd just jump in the lap pool. But while I was in there, I thought, oh, I'll just do 10, 15 laps. Yeah. Nice and easy, not, yeah. no voice in my head, no mentor or coach going come on yeah exactly right. and i'll do the 15 lengths i'll go upstairs and i'll shower um, again with the same principle of the way i eat when i'm hungry mm. i may not have eaten before i went to jiu jitsu yeah. anyway i'll weigh myself four kilos lighter wow we, kn we know this is mostly water yeah but so then during the night i'll start to sip the water back on and again the next day kilo to kilo and a half mm. lighter yeah the moral of the story is do exercise that you lose yourself in. Mm. And it's not just solely focused on losing weight. And you will lose weight in a more happier and natural way than you ever. Add the nutrition to it. We know that the nutrition and hydration is is the majority um, of the solution to losing weight, mm. to getting in the dream body. Uh, the body rela regulates itself once you move, once you sweat, and you're eating that way of, uh, of eating. Mm. And once the body gets to optimum, you know. So I call it optimum. Mm -hmm. um, once we start going below the body fat percentage that this body doesn't want, you start to get alarm bells. You start to get like your heart starts beating faster. Your body starts to shake because you're low in something. Mm -hmm. You know, you're low in a mineral or a vitamin or a carb or a protein or something, mm -hmm. or you're just training too much. Yeah. And it'll say put a bit of weight back on. Yeah. So yeah, this is and it's and it's it's instant this way of training. So this lady comes in, she completely does a 160. Yeah. And she gets the bike, she joins a swimming club, she goes dancing, yeah. and she starts dropping weight immediately. I told her to not eat until her body tells her to eat. I told her to throw every single processed bit of food out of her, out of her kitchen. She had to go and shop at the organic, um, uh, the organic butcher. She had to go to the farmer's market. She didn't like to cook, so I came round, I just showed out to her a shepherd's pie, a roast dinner. Um, a salad and we started her off and now she has to commit to learning new recipes taking an interest in it or she's got no chance yeah. 
and instantly she's dropping weight. So we had seven kilos in two weeks. She's a lot more happier. Her hormone levels have dropped. Again, I talk about the body regulating. Yeah. If she continues this for the next three months and then goes to the doctors and has all her uh, bloods checked and compares it to the last one, I guarantee you they'll have all have regulated. Yeah. Regulated is the return back to normal. That's what the body does. It thanks you. It says, what is this shit coming in my body? Yeah, exactly right. It goes, what are you doing to me? And we're, we're smashing the hell out of each other. It goes, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Unless you're an athlete. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got to be trained like racehorses. But when yeah. you're not an athlete, we need, you know, everyone talks about um, Feng Shui, yoga, meditation. Why? Because when the heart is relaxed and it's beating at a slow pace, we are healthier, um, we are more stimulated, we are happier, we're, we can take in more information, um, and we're healthier. Yeah. When we're high stress, stress, or stress, cortisol, cortisol, spiking, spiking, spiking. Anxiety, 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 yeah. just, just messes the belly up. Yeah, exactly right. So, and that's why I, lo I love that concept of, of putting love back in your thing yeah. and everything again. And I think that, I know it sounds a bit, for, especially for the you know, people who just want to smash themselves in the gym, but yeah. you know, you, you're an elite athlete. Yeah. And I've had that moment of you know, amateur boxing and marathon running and, and, footy, as well. and footy as well. Yeah. Like playing, got the opportunity to play for Italy, you know? Yeah. So these things, and I never did though accomplish 